At the time of this recording, YouTube has rolled this feature out to 50,000 YouTube channels and yours is on the way if you don't have it yet. What I'm talking about is YouTube's thumbnail A-B testing tool. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of A-B testing, what it is, is it's where in this case, as it relates to thumbnails, you can upload different thumbnails when you upload your video and then YouTube is going to automatically swap those thumbnails out and different viewers are going to see them at different times. In this case, YouTube is actually giving us A-B-C testing because we get to upload three different thumbnails, which is awesome. High five and fist bump to YouTube. <laughs> But I've had this feature for quite some time now and I wanted to share it with you because if you don't already have it, you're going to be getting it soon and I want to share with you how to use it and some things that you need to keep in mind so that once you do get it, you don't have to fumble around and try to figure everything out. So let's hop on the computer and I'll show you real quick. So first, when you go to upload your video, you're gonna see this pop up on the video details page at the time of upload. If you scroll down past your description, you're gonna see the options that look like this. You have the option to upload a file, choose auto-generated where they just take it from your video, a screenshot, and then test and compare. What you wanna click on is test and compare. When you click on test and compare, you're going to see this option here that tells you to upload three images to learn which one the viewer prefers. As you see here, they give you three different options, but if you wanna just test two, you can do that, or if you wanna test three different thumbnails, then of course you have the ability to do that as well. Once you have all the thumbnails uploaded, then once you publish your video, then YouTube is going to do all the testing from there. In order to see the results or the progress of the test, all you have to do is go back into your video details page after the video has been published, scroll down to the thumbnail area, and then there's a three dot menu that you see on the thumbnail when you hover over it. If you click on that, you have the option to view the test report, upload a different thumbnail, or also choose auto-generated. What you wanna choose there is to view test report. When you do that, they're gonna show you at the top of the screen the running time, or it'll let you know that it's complete. And then they're going to show you the different thumbnails, and then they're gonna show you how much of a watch time share each thumbnail brought in. Now, here's something that's interesting that might not make sense, so let me explain. In this option, they do not show you the click-through rate on the thumbnail. Instead, they show you which thumbnail generates the most watch time for the video. Here's why. When a viewer clicks on your video, it means that they're interested in your video. However, if the viewer ends up leaving quickly, then that means that their expectation of what they clicked on did not get met, which then shows YouTube that people didn't enjoy the video. But when a viewer clicks on your video and they watch it for a longer period of time, it means that that viewer's expectations are being met and that's really important to YouTube, which is why they prioritize that watch time share over click-through rate. Let's continue with the preview. If you look at this example right here, you can see that on the running time, I have eight days and 55 minutes left, but you can see between these particular thumbnails, I have different pictures of me. I have different versions of the 2023 and 2024 thing in this, but this one's all graphical. These two have me in them. And I can see right here so far that the one without me, well, people like it better. They respond to it better, which can be a hard pill to swallow. But at the same time, it's why it's so important to make sure that you don't get emotionally attached to the outcome. Once the test is fully complete, they're gonna give you your test report, which is gonna show you your running time. It's gonna show you that the test is complete. It's also going to show you the winner and it's going to show you the watch time share for each one that you tested. I'm happy to say in this particular case, I was in this thumbnail that won this particular contest. Now, everybody's <laughs> now keep in mind, even though the test is complete and you got the result out of it, you can run a new test at any time and it deletes this test and then it'll start the whole thing over again. Pretty cool, right? Now really quick, there's something that I want you to keep in mind when it comes to using this. When you first publish your video on YouTube and you have three different thumbnails in there, you wanna make sure that the thumbnails that you're testing are wildly different. That means don't just test a different text color or something like that. Instead, make them completely different thumbnails. The reason for this is because at the time of publish, YouTube is gonna be showing your thumbnails to a lot of people that are the most likely to enjoy your content. You wanna figure out what they respond to and just one minor color tweaks isn't going to be the answer. But if you wanna test those small details, after the video has been online for a while, that's when you can test those things because then it's settled in, YouTube knows who the right people are to show it to, and then from there, you can start looking for those little things that might make a difference. And feel free to get creative when you're testing with this. For example, a test that I'm currently running is about minimizing graphics. And for fun, since I was just A-B testing those two things, I went ahead and just added one with the minimized graphic, and I'll do it again once I figure out what the winner is, but I'm also testing the color of my beard and my thumbnail 
thumbnails to see if it matters when it comes to how often people click on my thumbnails. And my fingers are crossed that it doesn't matter because one, I don't wanna Photoshop my beard and all my thumbnails, and two, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna change this. And really quick, if you're a content creator that's in the majority where you just don't have time to make content and publish consistently, click into this video right here. It's a step-by-step -step schedule that you can follow that runs in two week cycles that can help you ensure that you can put more content out more consistently. Go ahead and click into that now and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.